the only advice I would, I would give to agents out there is if you're going to do anything on social media, make sure you know what you're doing. I, I've seen the P&Ls at corporates. I know how much right move charge per office at a corporate. I think these, these things may have worked five, you know, even ten years ago. They don't work in this modern age now. Uh, after a good ten years of working for corporates, I saw some really good stuff, but unfortunately the really bad stuff outweighed it. Yeah. You could see that the, the pushback, the, the unwillingness to change was more than I could ever overcome. And funny enough, the, uh, someone at that company said to me, Steve, you don't understand, you know, it's, when you work for a company of this kind of size, mm. trying to get changes through is like moving the Titanic. My parting words to my last employer were, your country are just six years behind, you just don't know it yet. It's sending out tens of thousands of letters uh, just a blanket like the like, oh, blanket drop the whole area of business cards and stuff like that and thinking these these things may have worked five yeah. you know, even ten years ago they don't work in this modern age now so Fuchsia came about how long ago Fuchsia started in January of this year and we're going to be going for seven months now and yeah I, it's, it's 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 exactly what I always knew an estate agency could be yeah. but I think I needed to go and do the jobs that I did at the corporates to reassure myself that made sense that, do you know what, there is a better way of doing a state agency. Yeah, so you're less than a year old. Yeah. Um, and you started, in a sense, a cold start business yep. in, in a market that <laughs> is, many say, is going backwards. Many yep. say the fees yep. are going down. Yep. Uh, tenant fee ban has caused mayhem. Yep. Uh, regulations coming in. Yep. Uh, we've got on, online estate agents threatening the whole thing. No better time to Huge, but obviously you've seen an opportunity yeah. that wasn't there. So it, 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 there's a lot of uh, fear agents, for example, are market leaders, mm -hmm. or they're going on, they're, they're on that path to be market leaders because they're noticing, <laughs> that, <laughs> noticing the same thing as you, yeah. that actually if you continue to do the old things really badly, you're gonna come unstuck because the, the volumes aren't there, are they, at the moment? Yeah. No. So what, what, is your, what is the future secret sauce? What are you doing, do you think, that's different to everybody else? I, th I think when I looked at opening the business, I thought, right, there's, there's the, you've got the high street, traditional high street estate agents, you have your online estate agents. And the only difference between an online estate agent and a high street estate agent is cost, that's it. So they can say, we'll do everything we do on the high street, but because we don't have the big overheads, we'll do it cheaper. And then you had the, uh, the, the few companies like Unfortunate Countrywide that tried to do the kind of hybrid thing and it didn't really work. So I said, what the marketplace is kind of looking for is not revolutionary, but refinement. It's like, a, like an evolution of what current estate agency looks like. And I think the online agents have kind of opened the door to that because actually they showed that there was a lot of good prop tech out there. A lot of stuff can be automated. The traditional high street agents missed out on it and they didn't really understand it so they stayed clear of it. Uh, and then I thought, right, so if I just research on how we can do, get everything of what people want from a traditional high street estate agent, take that with all the tech and the prop tech that online have, and then let's go wild. Let's see what else is out there. Is the marketplace really as bad as, as people are saying? Or is it that estate agency has just changed again and people haven't realised? I think more so now people are relying on a high street estate agent to give them really good, useful, local knowledge, advice on how to uh, add benefit to their home, how to get around market conditions and things like that, but also how to just get them moving, get them on with their lives. Because I think a lot of agents are going out sitting on people's couches at the moment and they're quite happy to eat their, you know, eat their Battenberg, drink their tea and say, Brexit's here, be warned it's going to take you maybe a year and you might have to drop that price. No. No. You just have to advertise differently. Yeah. You have to appeal to a different marketplace. You have to get the property out there to people that wouldn't have necessarily been looking at it or seen it. And there are methods of doing that, which we have found, and it works. And it absolutely works. The results we've had off the back of the, the stuff that we're doing um, with Google, with social media and everything, it's so much more powerful than what we're getting from the property portals. Where, where are you on fees? Would you set your fee at a fixed rate or a fixed percentage? Do you negotiate your fees or do you say, that is it, that's what we charge? I have a, a granny rule, okay? Um, and my granny, if I went and sat in front of her and said, granny, I'm gonna sell your house and I'm gonna charge you 3% plus, plus VAT and your house is worth 300 grand, she wouldn't have a Scooby what that means. But if I said to her, granny, your house is worth 300 grand and I'm gonna charge you 6,000 pound including VAT, she understands that. So we're all about clarity. And our average fee at the moment is, is about 1.1, 1 1.2%, 1 yep. which I think is, is bucking the trend around where we are because most agents are doing one or less, as we found out. Um, and there's agents, and this is why I find it quite sad because I don't think the, the public realize how hard we work in this industry and how much work we do, even just in the build up to valuing the property, how much research and how much time and energy we spend making sure that we're gonna advertise that property correctly for the right price and to get it sold on the right timescale to get them moving to their next home. Mm. 
Um, there, there's a reason why people will go and shop at you know, the Marks and Spencers and the Waitrose over a Lidl. They want better quality. They want to show better value, you know, better value for money, but a, a, better, a better product. Yeah. It's just, I, I find it very sad. I find it really sad because, because I, I, I've seen over the years so many good talented agents and rather than think outside the box on how they can raise their valuation levels and how to get more properties on the market and sell them, their first instinct is, we're too expensive, we've got to drop our price. So the licensing for agents that's gonna come out. So Massive yeah. fan of this, so yeah. You're, you're yeah. Of I've, I've been an advocate of this for years. I've been saying this needs to come in years and years and years ago. Yeah. Um, as you said earlier, if you're, a, if you're a mortgage broker, you're FCA registered. We deal with exactly the same kind of value transactions. We, we, we are bound by anti-money laundering laws. I have absolutely no idea why we are not individually registered. We should be. And then if there are complaints, if there are things that um, cowboy agents out there that do unscrupulous things, unethical things, complaints can be lodged against that individual and they can be struck off. It's how it should be. I think I described them to my account manager the other day as being a necessary evil. This area, if I was to show the, the vendors the actual stats of uh, where our leads come from and which property portals are more dominant, I think they would get a shock because way over half of our leads and everything come from Zoopla, which you wouldn't really expect in kind of like a, a greater London boundary area. You'd think Rightmove would be far more dominant and Zoopla with their prime location branding and everything would be still more dominant in zones one and two. And that's what I first thought when I opened, but it's very much the other way around. The problem is that Rightmove are very, very good at advertising their own brand and making the public think that Rightmove have to be there. They are needed. You can't sell without being on a, with an agent that's on Rightmove. So as I said to my account manager, you are a necessary evil, but do I see value for money in what I'm paying when unfortunately I, get, I pay double the money that I would to you than I would do to other portals, but see way under half of the result? No. What I see happening is, um, I, think right, I think Zoopla are doing some really clever stuff at the moment. They are really trying to innovate and change things and do they're genuinely trying to do more for their customers. So I've got, I'm big fans of Zoopla, and, and, I, and, I, and my account manager, Natasha, she's fantastic. So uh, Rightmove, I think Rightmove will come a cropper because they will think, their arrogance, their hubris, will think that they can just keep carry on existing. And as you said, that lots of agents are just gonna keep on losing their patience. Yeah. And they will just bin them and bin them and bin them and bin them until they realize, oh my God, we've now lost a huge chunk of our revenue because we were just too expensive. Yeah. Um, and coming from a corporate, when I spoke with uh, the account manager there and I said, look, I, I've seen the P&Ls at corporates. I know how much right move charge per office at a corporate. It is completely unfair that you can charge that sum of money for it. I don't care how many more offices they have, yeah. but you can charge pretty much half of what you charge to an independent. Yeah. And for what? We, we did everything that every other agent would do. We, we did the, the professional photos, the floor plans. We take a lot more time and energy in our photos and we, we spend huge amounts of time in our descriptions and everything. Um, but we, I'm very fortunate to work with some very talented people when it comes to um, you know, SEO uh, and social media and stuff like that. And so we just thought, do you know what? We're gonna give you the most stunning of paid ads on social media and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, and we ended up selling it to somebody that wasn't actively looking in that area. And that's because we are very quickly realizing that um, people aren't looking that actively anymore on, on property portals, but they are on social media a huge amount. Now, um, the only advice I would, I would give to agents out there is if you're gonna do anything on social media, make sure you know what you're doing. What enticed me to join was, uh, it was it, we wanted to be part of something that seemed to be uh, pushing the industry, changing, wanting to change the industry. So not just another thing to, you know, you could buy your membership into and put it in your window and say, oh, look at us, we're part of a you know, little club of estate agents. FIA genuinely represents the agents that are genuinely trying to push forward the industry and change the industry for the better, for, for the public, and only for the public, and, and trying to show that actually the, there is a different and better way of doing estate agency. So when I saw uh, the kind of members uh, that were signing up to FIA, um, and a very old friend of mine, um, shout out to Ed at Deacon White, um, then I just knew you know, that's, that's, that's what we wanted to be part of. That's, that's a good really forward-thinking group of estate agents that want to do better and can do better and, and want to change the industry. So, and then that's why I reached out to you, Graham, because that's something we wanted to be part of, because that's exactly why I, I did what I did with Future Homes. We wanted Future Homes to be different. <laughs>